Welcome to another video. I am the Starman and this is the first of a series of videos where I'm going to be looking at portable star trackers. I'm going to be taking a very close look at these portable star trackers which enable you to take long exposures of the night sky, deep space, Milky Way, all that sort of thing and not have that star trailing that you get when you have your camera on a fixed tripod and you take a picture of the night sky and all the stars trail. These counteract the movement of the Earth and they help you to take really long exposures of the night sky to get some spectacular photographs of the Milky Way. Now we're coming into winter now and that means that we're going to be getting longer nights and we've also got some brilliant uh, deep space targets coming into to view now. We've got uh, Orion is starting to come up now with the Orion Nebula and we've also got uh, the Andromeda Galaxy is coming. There's all sorts of things that you can photograph in the winter night sky and using a portable star tracker will help you to do that. And the thing is, you can carry these things around, see? Now, there are astronomy mounts, uh, German equatorial mounts that are quite heavy and they're not easy to, uh, to transport around. So these portable tracking mounts are great for, for traveling from your home, which may not be in a dark sky and you can travel maybe half an hour or an hour away to get to a dark sky and do some imaging uh, where you don't have, to have the light pollution. So anyway, I'm going to start by showing you my own tracker, which is this one. This is the Fornax Light Track 2. It's a Hungarian made portable star tracker and I've had it for a couple of years and it's absolutely brilliant. Now it is one of the more expensive models. Um, the, the main reason why I bought this one was because it was very similar to the tracker that I had before, which was an Astro track, and it works in a very similar way. It's also extremely accurate and it can take a lot of weight as well, and that was one of the other reasons why I bought it. So I'm going to be showing it all around this now, and I'm going to be showing you as well what I can do with it. So let's take a closer look at the Fornax Light Track 2. Right, okay, so here we are with my very own Fornax Light Track 2. And I will be bringing you some reviews on other trackers, such as the Skywatcher Star Adventure, the Ioptron Sky Guider in future videos. So watch out for those. This happens to be my own, so I'm going to have to beg, steal and borrow the other ones to do uh, reviews on those. But anyway, here we go. And uh, this is very similar to the one I had before, the Astro Track. And the way that it works is that it has an arm. This, this silver thing here is an arm that swings out either side, uh, depending on what hemisphere you're in. And when the motor starts running, the arm very, very slowly moves across like that. And that's what counteracts the Earth's motion once the, tr the, uh, the tracker is polarized. So let's have a look around it. And uh, what we'll do is we'll have a look at the, the back first. And uh, on the back, we've got the uh, on-off switch. Um, my my Astro Jack didn't have an on-off switch, but this one does. So you can turn it on and off. What you can do, with what's good about the on-off switch is that you can actually track a Milky Way landscape with the tracker turned on and then what you can do then is you can do the same landscape turn the tracker off and capture the foreground and then you can blend the two together it takes a bit of work you know in post to do that but that way you can blend the foreground in and that way you'll have a solid foreground and nicely tracked stars for your photographs so that's very useful that that's a 12 volt DC and there's also a um, an auto guide port there which I don't use and auto guiding is a little bit more deeper if you want to get into auto guiding I suggest you probably um, you look it up because it's not something that I do I don't think that I really need to do it to be quite honest um, anyway okay so it, auto guiding allows for more accurate tracking um, what it does is if your polar alignment isn't perfect what it does is the auto guider the software which is normally I think PhD I think will normally correct any mistakes or any kind of tracking errors. So that's what the auto guide's for. But anyway, so this is the polar arm, which takes the polar scope, and that's where you put the polar scope through, and you look, you point it towards the North Star, and then you align it with that, and once that's done, uh, the mount is then ready to track the sky. One thing I will say is that if you're using a very long lens or a telescope, your polar alignment is much more needs to be much more precise and here I have my quick release plate uh, which goes straight onto my uh, geared head which I use to uh, align the mount with the North Star okay so now looking on the front <coughs> see we've got a few buttons here 
and this one here controls the modes. So the first mode is sidereal, which is the one that you would normally use to track the night sky. And underneath that we have solar. Solar is slightly different. So I never use it. To be quite honest, I never use solar or lunar. So the sun moves at a different rate in the sky as the stars, slightly differently, and the moon even more so. Uh, but to be quite honest, I've never used any of those modes for anything I've done. And then there's also a half track mode, which other trackers do this. What it does is it tracks at half the rate so that you get less movement on the stars, but you also still get some movement in the landscape, but it's not quite as bad as what it would be if it was fully tracked. Again, this is another mode that I've never really used. I prefer to just track for the sky and then take a static shot of the foreground, if that's what I'm doing, and then I'll put them together in post. It does take a little bit of work, but uh, that's what I prefer to do anyway. Now for this button in the middle. Now all this does is switch the mount between northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere so most of you will be in the northern hemisphere so what we would do is we'd set the mount up the arm would swing out this way and it would track that way but if you're in the southern hemisphere you'd want to swing the, the arm out this way and track this way because the stars in the southern hemisphere go around in a different direction around the pole they go clockwise around the pole in the southern hemisphere whereas us up in the northern hemisphere we watch the stars go anti-clockwise around Polaris and this one here we have two buttons here and this basically does to set the mount up one moves the arm this way and the other one moves the arm the other way so you can set the mount up with these two and there's also a status light there as well so that's it really uh, there is a, a USB um, connector there which I think is for a firmware update, but I've never used that. So that's, that's pretty much it. That's the tracker itself. Now I'm going to put it on the mount and show you how it works. Okay, so as you can see, I've now put a camera on the top there, just for good measure. Just another thing about the, the ball head. When I tighten the ball head, make sure it's very tight because if it's loose, when you're moving the camera around, once you, you're all set up and you're pointing at different things, you do not want that to come loose and swing loose, otherwise it could be trouble. Now it doesn't matter which way you point the camera, it doesn't matter where you point the camera, up, down, left, right, it will track the night sky. So uh, the first thing I would do is I would set the mount up before I do anything else. So I would arm the mount by swinging the arm out all the way this way. I'm in the northern hemisphere, so the arm comes this way. If you're in the southern hemisphere, you want to be going, bringing the arm this way to track that way. So now, in fact, once you start, once you get to the end, it already starts tracking. It's tracking now, the, the status, LED is blinking which means that it's tracking. Now the tracking arm does have a time limit it has about two you can track for about two hours with this particular mount which might be a limit for some people not for me it doesn't bother me that once you get to this side after two hours you then have to reset it again it does mean that you have to recompose your shot again if that's what you if that's what you do that could be an inconvenience I suppose so if, you, if you're going to be imaging something for a long time make sure you track make sure that you arm the mount all the way back here and that gives you the maximum amount of time to track for. Once you've got the mount armed, you then want to polar align the mount. So you'll point the scope here, the polar scope, towards the North Star. Now, it's not quite as simple as just pointing it straight at the North Star. I'm going to show you now. Okay, so when you look through the polar scope, you'll see a circle in the middle, and you might see a depiction of the night sky inside the polar scope and the circle in the middle is very important because you need to put Polaris on a point on that circle. Now you can do it by rotating the, the mount, you can do it by rotating the polar scope so that it matches the sky and then you put the Polaris where, where it should be. In the, there's a little circle inside a circle uh, but the, the way that I do it is I use an app. Instead I use an app to find where I should put the the North Star on the circle. I'm not sure if you can see that, but I'll put it on the screen just in case. And you can see by looking at this um, chart I've got here, if I was polar aligning right now, which I can't obviously because it's during the day, um, Polaris would need to be at the one o'clock position. Now the reason for this is because Polaris makes its own little circle. It's not directly above the pole. It actually makes its own little circle. It's about a degree off. And that's the reason for having to put Polaris in a particular place on the circle. 
Okay, so now we're polar aligned. We've got the arm all the way out. And now that's it, we're ready to track. So you can take your camera and you can point it wherever you want in the night sky and it will track the stars. You can take long exposures, just think the Orion Nebula, things like that, the Milky Way. You can take long exposures of the Milky Way. Now, I might have mentioned it before that if you are using a telescope or a very long focal length lens, your polar alignment, which I mentioned just before, will need to be very accurate. You can't just, you know, be, be close. You have to be very accurate because if you want to use two, three minute exposures, a telephoto lens will show up any kind of inaccuracies in the polar alignment. So, but anyway, I have had no problems using a 300 millimeter lens with this mount. It is very, very accurate. So there you go, that's my little video on how to set up the Fornax Light Track 2, my very own Fornax Light Track 2, and a little review of it at the same time as well. Now look out for other videos where I will be reviewing other sky trackers and pitting them up against this one to see how easy they are to set up and also to see how well they perform. Uh, trackers like the Skywatcher Star Adventurer, the Ioptron Sky Guider Pro and the Move Shoot Move, provided I can get hold of them that is. Uh, but look out for those, I'm sure I'll be doing some uh, reviews on those trackers in the future. Anyway, so I hope this video has been useful to you. And if you like the video, hit the like button and also hit subscribe to see more videos like this one and tick the bell for notifications of new videos. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna leave you with some images that I have taken using this tracker here. And I will see you again next time.